The I-90 project is 15 miles in total and it's already started. Wildlife in the Cascades are always on the move. From the black bear walking at Gold Creek looking for berry fields to fatten up before hibernation, to the Tianaway wolf pack, where young individuals will go on a walkabout to not only check out the landscape that they're living within, but maybe find new places to set up a new home and new pack. I-90 has a tremendous impact on wildlife moving throughout the Cascades because it's carrying 27,000 vehicles a day bisecting the Cascades. If we prevent them from moving, we're blocking their ability to find food, we're blocking their ability to find places to live when conditions change, like the large fires we saw this year. And we're also blocking their ability to find new mates and have some genetic diversity in the population. So when the department first looked at this project, we looked at the transportation needs. We were really focused on the roadway. As we started developing our environmental impact statement, we took like a context-sensitive view of this whole area. We wanted to find a project that both moved people and wildlife at the same time, and I think we found a project that does that. The I-90 Snoqualmie Pass East project did a remarkable thing. Instead of just improving the highway to flow traffic east-west, it's actually reconnecting wildlife that are trying to move north-south in the Cascades, and it's doing it in two ways. It's creating underpasses for wildlife to move freely underneath that freeway, and then it's building bridges over the freeway for wildlife to move over it. So behind me is the Gold Creek Bridges. This is a win-win where everything kind of came together. We were able to address the transportation freight community needs by building a new bridge that has the six lanes on it. We were able to address wildlife connectivity by building a bridge wider that allows wildlife to come underneath it. So deer are walking through those underpasses on the dry ground versus getting river otters and harlequin ducks swimming underneath those underpasses in the water. And what we expect to see over time is even more dynamic. We're gonna see wolves as they expand in this area and wolverines crossing underneath these highway structures. As you see in this underpass, there's um, a bunch of different rocks that don't look entirely natural. The idea is that we're not only creating space for large wildlife to move through, but also for the smaller wildlife, the smaller mammals, frogs and snakes. An overpass is a bridge over the highway. It's gonna be 150 feet wide and vegetated with native trees and native shrubs from the surrounding forest so that they walk over the interstate and never realize they've left the forest that's been on either side. When people look at us and say this is crazy, their number one question is, how do we know wildlife will use these? In Banff, Canada, they have recordings of lynx and wolverines and grizzly bears crossing these structures. And so we know they're working and they are constructed elsewhere in the West. So our next funded phase of construction will start in 2015. And as part of that project, we're gonna expand the roadway to six lanes and do the highway improvements for another two miles. And one of the key features is we'll be building the first wildlife overcrossings as part of this project. The Department of Transportation is one of our greatest partners in advocating for this project, in educating people about it, and in monitoring what wildlife are out there. It's great to have the support from the nonprofit communities like Conservation Northwest. I believe I-90 tells that story that we have the power to restore things, not just on a small scale, but in grandiose design. And we are taking a six-lane interstate and actually constructing over 20 crossing structures to help wildlife move. So I feel hopeful when I look at I-90 because I can watch progress happen and I know what it adds up to.